So my Facebook is currently telling me that on this day, three years ago, I was on the island of Lombok, just off the coast of Bali. And that was around the same time they had this deadly volcano erupt um, in northern Sumatra in Indonesia. And then in November, Mount Agung erupted, I think it was five times. So this time, three years ago, the world was in a pretty disastrous state. Thank goodness times have changed. Hello and welcome back to another video where I'm going to be sharing another travel story with the help of my trusty bucket. You know the drill by now, I'm going to be pulling out a word or phrase from my bucket and that is going to be the topic of conversation. So let's get started. And today's video is going to be all about Australia's climate. Now some of you may be thinking, what a patronising biscuit. Biscuit. We know all about Australia's climate, okay? It's hot and it's sunny, right? Well, actually, I think you'd be surprised there's so much more to Australia's climate than you realise, and I'm going to be telling you all about that today. First of all, let's start with some fun facts about Australia. If you know me at all, you'll know that I love a fun fact. Okay, first fun fact. Australia is the world's sixth largest country, and it is also the world's largest island. Number two, Australia has three different time zones. And before I went to Australia, I didn't even know you could have half hour time zones. Did you know this? So sometimes I could be nine and a half hours ahead of the UK. Isn't that weird? Mind blown. The third fun fact is that Australia's landmass is about 50 times larger than the whole of Europe. The point I'm trying to make is Australia is absolutely massive, so it only makes sense that you're going to get lots of different climates. Let's start in the north, around the Northern Territory and Queensland. Now, these areas are obviously closer to the equator, and equatorial regions often have much warmer, sunnier climates that don't really change throughout the year. Now, there's a reason for this, and it's all to do with the Earth's tilt. Get ready for a science lesson. Okay, let's say this scrunches the sun and we'll use this pen to be the earth, okay? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> um, so here's our sun, stay still, here's us. Um, but we are actually slightly tilted. So let's pretend the top of the pen is the North Pole and the bottom of the pen is the South Pole. Because of the way the earth is tilted for half of the year, the northern pole is actually closer to the sun. But for the other half of the year, the southern pole is closest to the sun. And that's why you get these big differences in the winter and the summer. Whereas around the equator, it generally gets the most sunlight and is pretty constant. I hope that made sense. So that's why around the equator you don't really get the four seasons like we know it, a summer, spring, autumn, winter. You just generally get two seasons, wet and dry. I was in the Northern Territory living in Darwin for about six weeks as I was working in a bar. And this was around September time, so it was just coming into that wet season. And the wet season is just much hotter and humid. And I remember waking up in the morning in my hostel and I would go sit and have breakfast outside under the veranda. And two days in the row, I would get out my cereal and I would pour out my milk and the milk would just come out in lumps. It was disgusting. The fridge just didn't have enough power to keep the milk cold enough. Even brand new milk wasn't safe. So I just had to give up all dairy products. And Darwin is interesting because even though it's on the coast, you can't actually go swimming in the sea there. The problem is those waters around Darwin are all infested with crocodiles. And I'm talking about the uh, human eating, massive saltwater crocodiles, really not safe. So what they had to do was build a barrier along the coastline and then create a man-made beach for people to go and relax and uh, cool off in the sea. 
And I mentioned the fact that they're saltwater crocodiles because you can get freshwater crocodiles, um, but they tend to be smaller and uh, they're not really interested in humans. So uh, that's the difference. I mean, in general, I wouldn't recommend swimming with any kind of crocodile, really. There's more fun animals you could swim with, like turtles and fish. Dolphins. Oh, I would love to swim with dolphins. That'd be so cute. So remember that Darwin is in the Northern Territory and then you go across to the east and you come to Queensland. Queensland is where you have Brisbane and the Whitsunday Islands. And this is the kind of Australia that everyone thinks of. It's sun, sea, sand. The Whitsunday Islands is where you will find what is most commonly referred to as the most beautiful beach in the entire world. I was lucky enough to go visit this beach. Unfortunately, I visited on a particularly cloudy and drizzly day, so my footage really doesn't do it justice, uh, but it was still absolutely worth it. If you want to hear more about the Whitsundays and uh, what you can do there, let me know in the comments and I might do a video about it. So the climate around Queensland is quite similar to the Northern Territory in that it's always warm with varying degrees of humidity throughout the year. And I think it's mainly down to programs like Home and Away and Neighbours as to why everyone thinks Australia is this constantly hot and sunny place. Have you noticed in those programs it literally never rains? It's always sunny. It literally never changes. The only weather change there is when it goes from day to night, night to day. Night time. Day time. It feels like that film, The Truman Show, where Jim Carrey lives in a fake town full of actors who are all part of this TV show. But Truman is the only one who doesn't know it's a TV show. He thinks this is his real life. He lives in this giant studio where the roof just looks like sky and they have their own indoor weather system and it's always sunny. You probably know that Home and Away is filmed in Sydney and Neighbours is filmed in Melbourne. Now I can forgive Home and Away for the constantly sunny weather because Sydney's Mediterranean climate means it is pretty nice all year round. In summer it is hot and in the winter it is uh, fairly mild around 16 degrees Celsius. I had to do a little bit of research around these soaps because um, I've never watched them. Soaps aren't really my cup of tea. But I found this story uh, of when the Home and Away actors once petitioned to get their characters to wear more clothing because they were just generally cold on set. And the producers said no because it's always summer in Sunny Bay. What are you? An idiot sandwich. So if you look closely enough, you might catch a glimpse of some goosebumps on the actor's skin. That's because, despite what the producers want you to think, it is not always hot in Sydney. When we travel further south to Melbourne, however, that's when you really see the seasonal changes. It's a very common thing to hear people say that you can experience four seasons in a day in Melbourne. And it's so true. The summer can see temperatures as high as 30 degrees and then it can get down to as low as 6 degrees in the winter. So it's actually not that far off from the UK. The same goes for Perth, which is in the southwest of Australia. And I flew to Perth in July. So I was leaving the British summer and plunging myself into the Australian winter. And I did not prepare myself for how cold it was going to get. Within the first few days of being in Australia, I had to go and buy joggers and jumpers because I did not prepare for the weather. <laughs> I didn't think I would need warm clothing for Australia. And because of Melbourne's southerly location on the earth, uh, in January and February time, it can momentarily become the coldest city on earth. And sometimes people don't believe me when I tell them all this. They especially don't believe me when I tell them that Australia even gets snow. It's in a small select part of Australia, of course, but even in those areas, it can snow enough that you can go skiing. I googled this and there are 16 ski resorts in Australia, all kind of in the high country between uh, Canberra and Melbourne. So you could actually tell your friends, oh yeah, I'm going on a ski holiday to Australia. They'd probably think you were mad, but it is possible. 
And this is all just the coast that I've touched on. I haven't even begun to speak about the whole middle area of Australia. No, no. We could talk forever about Australia's different climates. Let's just talk about the bit you're probably going to be most interested in, which is the area around Alice Springs and Uluru. This area is called the arid zone. That means that there is lack of water, which prevents the development of plant and animal life. Unsurprisingly, in this hot piece of desert, there are only two seasons, wet and dry. This desert land has long hot summers with temperatures reaching up to their high 30s, sometimes even in the 40s in December and January. In the winter, the days are quite pleasant, around 20 degrees, and at night it can drop as low as six. A lot of people visit Alice Springs at this time and really are not prepared for how cold it can really get. For half the time during winter, there is frost on the ground and temperatures can drop to freezing. So if you're visiting Uluru or Alice Springs between June and August, make sure you take your warm layers. I am told that the absolute best time to visit is in May. Did you hear that? I said May because the weather is good without being too hot and you don't have to deal with all the flies. If you are going to go in the summer months of June and July, August, just be prepared to deal with the millions of flies that will be around. Are you willing to deal with that? Are you? Is that what you want? The great thing about Australia is that it's so big and diverse. You can have whatever holiday you want. You can have that beach holiday. You can go skiing. You can experience the UK climate if that's what you really want, you know, whatever floats your boat. I don't know, some people might actually like that. If you have any questions about anything I talked about today, or you want some advice about maybe the best places or time to go to Australia, um, you can email me at alicesbucket at outlook.com, or you can just leave your questions in the comments. I love reading your comments. Uh, it makes me feel really happy to engage with you, um, especially in a time like this. So please let's keep talking and socializing and sharing stories. So this was fun. You learned a little bit about geography, a little bit about science, and I'm not qualified to teach you any of these things. Okay, that's all for today. Bye for now.